What is going on old school community? Today I am bringing you a video on different alternate accounts that might be the best for you depending on your play style and depending on how much work that you are willing to put in to create one of these alternate accounts. In this video I have three different skilling alts and three different combat alts that in my opinion are all very good choices depending on whether you want to do skilling or whether you want to do combat and they all have an AFK aspect to them. You can check the timestamps in the description below for a timestamp of where I talk about each of these alts if you're looking for a particular one or if you just don't feel like watching the whole video, maybe something down there will spark your interest and you can just jump to that. But before we get into the information for these alternate accounts, I want to remind you all that I'm always accepting the best loot tabs that you guys can submit to me and the lowest KC drops for the showcase videos. These showcase videos come out once every other month and they feature certain players who have either had the luckiest drops or who have spent the time to create the best loot tabs in the old school community. So if you think you have one that is good enough to make the cut and get featured, you can send it to the email address on the screen right now. I will go through them. I will pick the best of the best and I will let you know if you get featured in the next video. So go ahead and send those my way. Now, before I get started here, I do want to throw in a little disclaimer. Some of these alternate accounts do have some pretty high requirements. Now, you have to spend money and spend time to make the big money. If you don't, you're not going to make that much. You have to be dedicated enough to want to create one of these accounts to actually make the money that you're looking for on the side. If you came to this video thinking that you might be able to make an easy alt, well, there are a couple easy ones in here, but the majority of them do require a lot of work and a lot of time, but their benefits in the long run are very good. So keep that in mind while you're watching this video. So the first alternate account that I want to get into is going to be a cooking alt. Now, some of you might be like, what? A, a cooking alt? What, what do you mean a cooking alt? Well, a lot of the higher level foods do cook for profit compared to their raw counterparts, and it can be quite a decent AFK profit per hour. Now, for this alternate account, I am going to recommend that you have 99 cooking. And the reason behind that is because when you have the cooking cape equipped, you will never burn another piece of food. As long as that cape is on, no burns ever. Some of the higher level food, you will still burn at 99 if you don't have that cape or the gauntlets equipped. Now, 99 cooking in itself is very easy to get. It is a very easy, very AFK 99 to get. It will take you some time, but in the long run, you could see a variety of numbers of profit, which I will go over right now. Now, as of the time of this video being made, there are four good foods that you can cook that are profit, and these are going to be anglerfish, sharks, dark crabs, and sea turtles. So after watching this video and you decide maybe the 99 cooking alt is for you, well, there are going to be two places that you're going to want to cook. It's either going to be in the Myths Guild or the Rogue's Den. These are the shortest trips to a fire source where you can cook fish, which all of these are, at the Rogue's Den, you won't even have to move, and you can cook roughly about 1,400 fish per hour. Now, as far as the Myths Guild, it is the same speed, 1,400 per hour. So, what kind of profits can you expect from a 99 cooking alt? Well, at the current market prices at the time of this video, if you decide you want to do angler fish, you can make somewhere between 180,000 and 200,000 GP profit per hour. If you decide to do sharks, you can make between 210 and 225,000 GP per hour. And these are the most prevalent because people are always fishing these. Now, as far as the next two go, one is located in the wilderness, which maybe not many people do. And the other one is a reward from the fishing trawler minigame. So there might be a limited supply. But if you can get your hands on a good amount, if you decide to do dark crabs, you can see between 260 and 275,000 GP per hour. And if you decide to do sea turtles, you can see somewhere between 250 and 265,000 GP per hour. Cooking is very AFK, especially if you're doing it at the Rogue's Den. So that is just an easy, easy 1 to 2 million GP per day if you have that kind of time to spend playing and alting the game. Moving on into the next alternate account, the next one is going to be an Amethyst Mining Alt. Now, Amethyst does have a pretty steep requirement, and that is 92 Mining. And 92 Mining is a skill that takes a long time to get to, uh, depending on the way that you want to do it. 
Now you could choose to go do three tick mining to get there quickly, uh, but that kind of defeats the purpose of an alt unless you really want to rush and make that alt viable as soon as possible. Me personally, if I was making an amethyst mining alt, I would probably get up to level 92 mining at the mother load mine. This way you can get the mining experience and you can still do it AFK. And while you're getting that level 92 mining, you can expect to see somewhere between 25 and 30 million GP profit just getting your alt ready to start mining amethyst. Now, 92 mining is the only thing you will need to actually get started with mining amethyst. You don't need any other requirements aside from access to the mining guild, which you will already have because it's only level 60 to get in there. But there is one more thing that you might want to consider getting before you start mining the amethyst. In the mining guild, there is an NPC by the name of Bellona who sells mining gloves. These mining gloves will offer you a chance of non-depletion on ores. So you will first collect enough minerals to get the mining gloves, then you will get the superior mining gloves, and then you will need 60 additional unidentified minerals, which will give you a total of 240 unidentified minerals. You will combine the mining and superior mining gloves to create expert mining gloves. These expert mining gloves will then give you a 25% chance of non-depletion on the amethyst ore, making it a little bit more AFK, so you'll be able to get one or two ores more, maybe from one amethyst rock. So it makes your life a little bit easier. But how much can you make? So you can expect somewhere between 300 and 375,000 GP per hour on an amethyst mining alt, depending on your level. Obviously, 300,000 is on the low end at 92 mining, and 375,000 is going to be up there around level 99 mining. And finally, for my last viable alt, this is going to be the angler fishing alt. Now, this one does also have some steep requirements. You will need at least level 82 fishing to get started and 100% house favor with the Piscarillius house. But if you are looking for one of the most AFK alting experiences, the angler fishing method is probably going to be the one for you. It is pretty up there on the AFK list. Now, what kind of money can you make? If you start fishing the anglerfish at level 82, you're looking at somewhere around 138,000 GP per hour, which really isn't bad for pretty much no effort. You fish for a long time, there's a bank pretty close, you bank and then you go back to fishing for a long time again and you just repeat the process over and over again. Now once you start to approach level 99, get level 99 and surpass it, you're going to be seeing somewhere around 277,000 GP per hour on the angler fishing alt. That's not really bad. I mean, not really comparable to the amethyst mining alt, but it's pretty close. And as far as comparable to the cooking alt, definitely comparable to that. So those are three skilling alternate accounts that I definitely think are viable and worth the time to make depending on what you're looking for in an alternate account. Now I want to switch sides here and talk about combat alternates. Now I have three of them that I have chosen, Gargoyles, Brutal Black Dragons, and Rune Dragons, and I have used all three of these alternate accounts myself while I was working on my Slayer Pure account. They are all three decently high requirements, but they can very well be worth your time. The first combat alternate account that I want to go over is going to be the Gargoyle alt with the Guthans armor set. Now you will have to have at least a level 70 defense and 70 attack to use the Guthans armor set, but you're going to want to have your stats a little bit higher than that. As far as defense is concerned, you want to have at least level 82, and this will completely offset the damage output of the gargoyles when compared to the healing effect of the Guthans armor set. As far as attack and strength go, you'll probably want to have at least level 80 plus in both of those. You will also need to have level 75 Slayer to do damage to the Gargoyles and obviously your Rock Hammer to finish off the kill. Gargoyles are aggressive for about 10 minutes, so you'll have 10 minutes of AFK time only needing to pick up the loot. After that 10 minutes is up and you notice that they aren't aggressive, you'll just leave the area and come back to reset the aggression. I also want to suggest bringing along some high level alchemy so you can get rid of all the rune items, the granite malls, and the black mystic tops because their grand exchange value isn't that much more or less than the alchemy value so it's much more worth your time to just alk it on the spot i would also suggest bringing along a dragon battle axe to boost your strength this way you can maximize your inventory space and you won't have to bring along super attack and strength potions as far as profit goes you're looking at somewhere between 400 and 600 000 gp per hour depending on your combat levels at the time 
The next combat alt that I'm going to talk about is a Brutal Black Dragon alt, and this is my personal favorite. So for the Brutal Black Dragon alternate account, I have a couple things that I want to show you guys. So first is going to be the requirements. You're going to need at least a level 77 Slayer to kill the Brutal Black Dragons, and I would suggest that you have at least level 90 ranged if you're particularly making an alternate account just for Brutal Black Dragons. You will also need to have access to the continent of Zaya, which is very easily achievable. You can just take the boat there one time, then you can get there as many times as you like. And I would also suggest going to get yourself a Xerix Talisman to use the teleports around Zaya. Now, if you plan on making a Brutal Black Dragon alt account, I would suggest that you do this only if you have the funds to provide it with a Dragon Hunter crossbow or a Twisted Bow. Anything less than this, it will still bring you profit, but not the profit that you might be expecting. If you're using a Toxic Blowpipe or an Armadillo crossbow, it's not really going to be comparable to the Dragon Hunter crossbow or the Twisted Bow. Up on the screen now is a DPS comparison between the regular Void set and a Blessed Dehyde set, which are set 1 and set 2 respectively. Now I'm using the Dragon Hunter crossbow as a comparison for the weapon, and that is going to be 4.908 DPS on the Void set and 4.907 DPS on the Blessed Dehyde set. Now, that is not a huge difference. It's going to take you a very long time to make up that DPS difference, a lot of kills, so if you are making a Brutal Black alt, I don't suggest going for the Elite Void set because that's just going to take you even more time and more skill and level requirements when you can just get a regular set of Blessed Dehyde for a lot less time and get started a lot faster. Now on this next screenshot, we have a comparison between the regular Void set and Armadil. Now, if you have the money to fund Armadil, you're going to have a decent DPS increase and accuracy increase on this. As far as the regular Void set goes, it is 4.908, and for the Armadil set, it's going to be 4.977. Now, you will have to get some additional defense levels to wear the Armadil set, but it could be well worth it if you have the GP to fund an account with Armadil. Now, as for my final thoughts on this... If you have the money and the time to get those extra defense levels, the Armadil set is absolutely worth it. As far as my alternate account went with doing Brutal Black Dragons, I went with the Bless Dehyde body and chaps and the whole set, and I still saw between 1.1 and 1.2 million GP per hour with the Twisted Bow. Now, what can your profits be if you're using one of these particular gear setups? Now, I would suggest using the Dragon Hunter crossbow as a bare minimum. So if you're using the Dragon Hunter crossbow with either the regular Void set or the Blessed Dehyde set and all of the other items, you're going to see somewhere between 700 and 900,000 GP per hour, depending on your range level. And if you opt to go for the higher requirements and the more money and go with the Armadil setup, you're most likely going to see between 800,000 and 1 million GP per hour with the Dragon Hunter crossbow. And last but not least, my final alternate account is going to be the Rune Dragon Alt, and this is going to have some very steep requirements. It takes a long time to get this account going, but it is well worth it if you actually have the time to dedicate to creating an alternate account like this. As for requirements, you are obviously going to need high combat stats and a good amount of money for gear. The combat stats that I recommend are at least level 90 in attack, strength, and defense. Higher if you can manage it, but you will get levels along the way depending on how much you play the Rune Dragon alt. You will also need to have the Dragon Slayer 2 quest done to be able to kill the Rune Dragons. In order to do this, there are a lot of quests, and I have only listed off the major ones. Legends Quest, Dream Mentor, A Tale of Two Cats, Animal Magnetism, Ghosts Ahoy, Bone Voyage, and Client of Karen, and obviously all of the sub-quests that are required to do those major quests. You will also need some decent skill requirements to complete the quest as well. 75 Magic, 70 Smithing, 68 Mining, 62 Crafting, 60 Agility, 60 Thieving, 50 Construction, and 50 Hit Points. So yeah, the requirements are pretty steep, like I said before, but it's definitely worth it. At maximum efficiency, with the best gear and decent stats, you can see somewhere between 55 and 60 kills per hour, and the average Rune Dragon kill is worth about 41,000 GP at the time that this video is being made, but I wanted to add a little bit of a human factor in there, so we'll say you can achieve about 50 kills per hour, and that is semi-AFK. You will have to pay a little bit of attention because all of the damage from the Rune Dragons cannot be negated, but... 
as far as that goes, 50 kills per hour can bring you in somewhere around 2.05 million GP per hour. So if you have another account that you're building, maybe you're building a skilling alt, or maybe you're making a Zerker PK, or who knows, on the side, you could be doing Rune Dragons on that main account or your alternate account, depending on how you're doing it. And you can see a lot of money per hour. I mean, if you're getting in five to six hours per day of playing, that is an easy 10 to 12 mil to add to your bank. So that's going to do it, everybody. That is six different alternate accounts between both skilling and combat that could be viable depending on what kind of alternate account you're looking for and what kind of dedication that you have to put towards this alternate account. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope that one of these alternate accounts might spark something in you and you can be like, well, that one's for me. Maybe I'll go ahead and start creating that. So if you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up down below. They really do help the video's popularity. And if you haven't done so yet, you can tap the subscribe button, which is down in the bottom right corner on the end screen or below the video. Make sure you turn the bell icon. It will let you know whenever I go live or whenever I upload new content. And if you have your ad blocker enabled, you might want to consider joining the channel. It does help support my channel and helps me bring as much new content to you guys as I possibly can. So thanks guys for watching. I will see you guys on the next video. Take it easy, everybody.